Hey, what's up street calls? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, I wanted to give you guys some practical tips on how to shoot uh, film photography. And it is to promote film notes, aka the coolest thing that you want to do in terms of a uh, hipsterdom. Okay, so I'm just going to open up some different pages and give you guys some um, yeah, just some uh, practical tips and uh, hopefully just give you some inspiration. So this is just chapter three. I'm just going to jump around. So what do I want to photograph? One of the, the most important things in photography is just to know what you want to photograph. So for me, I want to photograph uh, my loved ones. And that's one nice thing I like about shooting film is that like if you look at this photo of my mom at her hometown, when you shoot film photography, it's a lot more personal than digital photography because it's just kind of a huge pain to ask to get all your film uh, developed and processed. And also when you're shooting film, you guys might know that every time you click the shutter, this actually costs you something. And film is not cheap. Uh, there are ways to make it cheap you could actually buy bulk roll uh, black and white film and you could probably roll your own film for less than a dollar a roll. So there are, and then if you, assuming you develop and uh, do your film yourself, you could actually make it very cheap. But for the most part, uh, myself included, you're really putting skin in the game by shooting film. And for me, shooting film helps me make more meaningful photos because if I'm willing to spend, uh, so I, I outsource my film and development and scanning, if I'm willing to spend, let's say, 12, 13 bucks a roll to get developed, I'm only going to shoot what's really important to me and really important in my heart. Whereas if I'm shooting anything digital, it's just kind of more throwaway because you don't really have to think so much before it. And that's the biggest misconception of films that, oh, it must suck that you have it's so expensive. But no, it's actually a blessing because you appreciate it more. So know what you want to photograph. There's lots of different things we like to photograph. So I think film photography is actually really good for family photos, believe it or not. So rather than just shooting photos of your family on your iPhone or your smartphone, uh, consider to shoot film. Uh, I have a friend, his name is Jeffrey. He shoots most of his family photos just on like Kodak gold film. And it kind of gives us this warm, nostalgic feel. And trust me, 20 years from now, all of your family photos shot on film will look 100 times better than anything you shoot on your iPhone or any digital camera that exists right now because film photos are generally more timeless because the organic nature, the organic random nature of analog film, I think is just aesthetically more beautiful to us. Just kind of like living things, like just kind of, uh, we have this natural thing called biophilia. We just love natural things. Other things to consider when it comes to shooting film photography is, I'm just gonna kind of skip around uh, film notes. So just kind of knowing just some um, practical tips. So I'm just gonna, I'm skipping to the, to the back of uh, film notes. So some quick tips we have is taking three steps closer. So when we're shooting film and digital, just get closer and looking for gestures. So this is actually uh, an important thing. When you're shooting, and, then, and once again, this is not just film photography. This applies to if you're shooting your iPhone, digital, whatever. What we're trying to do as photographers, we're trying to capture more emotion in our photos. And to capture more emotion in your photos, you want hand gestures. So if you have a photo of somebody doing this or like pressing their fingers against their foreheads or pointing in different directions or scratching their chin. There's so many good ways we could capture more emotion through body language and hand gestures. If you're, let's say you're making photos of your family, a good way to capture more emotion in your photo and natural gestures, don't just be like, oh, put your hand like this. Be like, oh, you know, Sally, your hair looks lovely today. What did you do to your hair today? And you kind of gesture with your hands and then they're going to say, oh, my hair, he, and then they're going to, you start clicking when they start doing that. Or simple things too, is that like asking somebody to take their fingers, pressing against the forehead 
and ask them to think about something deep. So just say to them, I mean, depending on the emotion you want, you could say, think about the most difficult time in your life and how you overcame that. And then people often, when they're thinking about depressing things, look down. So for me, that might be how my dad used to beat my mom. Or you could ask, think about some of the happiest moments of your life. Oh, the, the time I, I married Cindy. Uh, usually you kind of look up. And with film photography, the good thing about, you know, shooting this film thing is that You don't need to share it with the whole world. Um, my friend Bellamy Hunt, aka JapanCameraHunter.com, whenever he makes photos, and he still shoots a lot of film for himself, it's just his family personal photos, and he don't got to share it with nobody but himself and his family. And I think as a photographer, as long as you share your photos with at least one other human being, or really at the end of the day, as long as you're making photos for yourself, and they bring you joy and happiness, and they elate your soul, it's, uh, it's totally worth it. And you could find personal meaning regardless of whatever camera you shoot with. So you could shoot with your iPhone, your Android phone, like any digital camera, DSLR, point shoot, Fuji. It, it really doesn't matter. I know that for myself personally when I do shoot, because I still shoot digital and film. I think it's it's not one or the other. It's, it's figure out how you could integrate both into your lifestyle. So for example, you're still gonna send emails, but if it's your mom's birthday, it's nicer to write her a handwritten card. And that's, that's actually what I try to do too, is that I've actually been writing my friends just, just thank you cards or just cards in general. And rather than just saying, oh, happy birthday, have a great summer, peace out. I kind of write these like freestyle poem, uh, nice things to my friends. So like, oh, I'm gonna make you a poem right now off the top of my dome. So, dear friend, I know we'll meet each other again. In terms of our creativity, let's extend and bend the rules of reality. Even though things in life could be hard and painful like a cavity, never let bullshit gravity hold you down. Rather, gather all your creative ideas and take it to the next level. Keep beating the bass in the treble. Life is never a leveled path. But never give up, let's make our life last. Tie yourself to the ship like Ulysses' mast. Watch out for the sirens. You know your heart is gold. And if you stay true to yourself, you will inherit the whole world. I just made that up. So once again, friend, um, thank you so much for watching these videos. There's like a bajillion videos on YouTube and a bajillion great photographers to follow. I mean, some other guys on YouTube who I, I think are awesome in terms of YouTubers. Uh, photographers, of course, Kai Man Wong, the most entertaining, interesting uh, photography guy on YouTube. Uh, there's some guy named The Angry Photographer. Thanks so much for giving me the, the shout out. He's only photographer I know who combines Greek philosophy, photography, and like astrophysics. This guy is like a genius. Uh, donate to his uh, his PayPal. And oh, the Ted Forbes from uh, the Art of Photography. Great YouTube channel. Like amazing production. But you could really see that he's trying to promote how to make more meaningful photographs rather than just getting bunches of uh, camera views. 
your time is the most valuable thing so thank you so much for watching these videos and if you want to start learning how to shoot more film pick up a copy of uh, film notes just go to the air kim blog i'll include a link in the description and just something that you could play around with put it on your commute i know the book's not cheap but every purchase will support uh, me and cindy supporting our family but also for us to continue to do more free stuff on the blog and if you guys all know in capitalist society we need money to do dope stuff and it's cool that there's lots of places for you to write down uh, personal notes and the best thing is all these different uh, film assignments so like uh, for those of you guys who can't either afford it or can't buy it because you guys are too far away I'll just read you some uh, simple film assignments so shoot one roll of film a day only in your house shoot one roll of film all with a flash finish one roll of film in one day shoot one roll of film with a color lens filter for black and white so a yellow filter is good shoot one roll of film at night with ISO 1600 uh, film you could either push it or just use 1600 film shoot one roll of film with only self portraits to yourself on a tripod selfie and mirror reflection and shadow etc shoot one roll of only street portraits one photo per stranger a total of 36 street portraits for every photo you shoot on film take the same photo on your smartphone shoot one roll of film focusing on only textures shoot three rolls of film one roll on film on circles one for squares and one for triangles try out medium format film try out large format film self-publish a zine aka magazine of your best 10 best film photos and you could just use a xerox copy at fedex exhibit your best five film photos at a local cafe and the sad truth is if you do shoot with a hipster film camera and you tell people that you shot on film i mean this is not really fair but people will respect your art more because from a marketing tactic or a branding tactic everyone shoots with the iphone if you want to differentiate yourself and show that you're only shooting film that's going to be cool so once again just google air kim film notes or you know go to air kim blog and then just click the the store link in the top right corner please 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 buy buy one for yourself buy one for your friend you know buy one for anyone who you're interested who is passionate about film if you're watching this and your partner's into photography just pick up a cheap film camera or if you have a free one just laying around give them a copy of that and a copy of uh, film notes it'll be a really lovely gift and also it goes really well with almond milk cappuccino photos on the grams <laughs> i'm only halfway kidding and also it's cool it's uh printed here in california uh right down the uh the block here in the, the oc in cali and like i always like to say buy books not gear rather than buying a $3,500 leica mp and a $3,000 leica 35 f2 Summicron lens buy yeah buy the the $20 copy of a uh, film notes see if you could just pick up an old can uh, film camera just lying around the house ask co-workers friends if they have any film cameras lying around just go to the, the drugstore pick up a disposable film camera or if you want to buy one the best bang for the buck film camera is probably the contax t2 it's got a 38 mil zeiss 2.8 lens you might get one used for like i don't know four four hundred bucks go to japancamerahunter.com to pick one up and if you want to buy film check out my buddy vishal at camerafilmphoto.com i used to buy all my film on b and h and amazon but now i just want to support my buddies and um, small businesses because b and h photo or amazon don't need no more of our money we got to help support uh, our local artists and our friends so thank you guys once again film notes film notes film notes and also the electric red cover it just looks freaking cool all right thanks so much for watching guys peace out